Good morning. How is everyone? Good. It's kind of cool being back in this venue, don't you think? I just love the energy of this venue. Um, I just want to start by thanking you all for coming here today. I know how challenging it is to work in advertising, how time-pressed you are, and that you prioritize this. Uh, the team and I take it extremely seriously to make sure it was worth the trouble. I um, also want to welcome our live stream audience. This is the first time. Hello. Um, <laughs> We've got people tuning in from all over the world. Uh, we've got a lot of agencies hosting live stream parties, which is cool. And thank you to HP for underwriting that. Um, we've got a 3% th conference hashtag, which is 3% conf. And this year, our friends at Twitter have created a custom emoji that will come up every time you use that, which will just get more eyeballs on our tweets of what's being shared here today. So please use that. Um, and now I just want to uh, talk a little bit about the theme for this year, Beyond Gender. I'm sure some of you saw a blog post I wrote introducing that theme months ago, but it was a real awareness that women were being advanced, but other forms of diversity were being um, not prioritized, and that that's just not okay by us. We want every single brain to be utilized at its fullest. And so I want to show you what that looks like in action with the short video. Diversity equals creativity equals profitability. It's a rally cry that leaves no one behind and no one's needs backburnered. Because here's the bottom line. Being inclusive is not just the right thing to do, it's also profitable. That's why we as an industry are taking bold action. Take Gray Advertising, for example, who is adding language to their creative brief that will ensure their ideas are free from bias. Gray stands for famously effective ideas. You'll see them plastered all over the walls. But to create these famously effective ideas, you need that diversity of thought. And diversity of thought comes from diversity of people. This initiative in, with the Creative Brief is, again, reminding people that this is what we are all about. Or HP, who sent a memo to their agencies asking for a commitment to radically improve diversity in leadership roles. We came to the realization that we needed more innovation and to build more emotional connection with our target audiences. The best way to do that is by having diverse teams that reflects the communities that we serve. And Bank of America's Advertising Center of Excellence, who employs over 300 people with intellectual disabilities. If three million people in the United States have intellectual disabilities and you want to understand them as customers, then you also have to understand them as employees. They have to be a part of your culture. But not all actions need to be so bold. Because change also comes from the culmination of thousands of micro-actions from influencers like you. One micro-action that we could take is have a much more neutral way of learning about someone else. And a great question to ask is, what's your story? Going beyond gender is about recognizing and changing our own internal biases. I can't help but feel that as human beings, we're weighed down, whether we want to be or not, by our past experiences, by prejudices. And when I say that, I always give the example of, I'm like, if you got beat up in fifth grade by a girl named Helen, Every time you meet a girl named Helen for the rest of your life, you're going to be like, I don't know if she's going to be a great person. The difference that you want to be is, I'm going to give her a chance. That's how you kind of break out of a prejudice mindset. And making an impact person by person, organization by organization. You got to demonstrate that diversity actually works. When you actually bring people to those jobs and, and, and create an environment where they can succeed, success begets success. So that's what beyond gender means. And for those of you that, how many of you were here last year? I just want to see a show of hands. So a good amount of you. Last year's theme, if you recall, was what are you going to do about it, which really was about personal microactions. And our friends at Jack Morton produced the most beautiful book of portraiture, and they turned your intentions into pieces of art. And these are for sale down in the bookstore. 
I want every ad agency that's here to have one of these in their lobby on the coffee table so that everyone that comes through your agency is, sees that prompt and thinks about what they could be doing and sees that you are part of this journey. Uh, we also have these shirts. Have you guys seen these? They say status quote. Those are also downstairs. So these are just ways we want you to continue to have this message in your orbit, wear it to the gym. Okay. Um, so I want to tell you, we had the most incredible year, our team, and sometimes I think people come to this conference and they think this is all we do. We put on this one event. We never stand still, and I want to just take you through the year we've had. This is some shots from our, 3 our Super Bowl tweet up. How many of you participated in the Super Bowl tweet up? Cool. So that, for those of you who don't know, that's when on Super Bowl Sunday, the biggest advertising spend day of the year, agencies around the country open their doors on a Sunday, they turn the heat on, they bring in food, and female creative directors um, live tweet about the ads in real time. And it's a very good way to remind the world that women make advertising and women watch advertising. So that was super fun. And then in February, we launched a new series that we announced here last year called Inspired By. And the idea about this was to have me sit in conversation with someone that is blowing up or changing the ratio in another industry. So this is me sitting with Lindy West. For those of you who don't, I, she's, I'm a huge fan of hers. We talked about the work she's done to make online spaces safe for women. She also has challenged the lack of women in the world of comedy. So that was awesome. Uh, we did a second one of these series in April in New York City with Natalie um, Molina Nino, who is reframing how you, people are funding women. And we have a third one coming up we'll announce um, in the closing remarks when that's happening. Detroit, do we have some Detroiters here? Detroit gave us such a warm welcome. We did a one-day conference there in May. Thank you to Donor for being our presenting sponsor. It was a packed house. Uh, we talked a lot about automotive and the opportunities there for inclusivity. After that, Can. Uh, this is Leeson Stromberg, our COO, sitting in conversation with Madonna Badger. Um, thank you to Amazon.com for underwriting that event. And then, there's Lisa again sitting in conversation with leaders on our It Takes a Village book tour that Momentum underwrote this year. Uh, three of the four cities, uh, we've been to Chicago, New York, and LA. And there's an event next week in Atlanta, for those of you from Atlanta, um, really talking about um, the importance of nonlinear careers being honored, whether that's due to um, motherhood, whether that's due to millennials wanting more freedom. Um, but Leeson's written a great book on the topic, and we took that around the country. The Phyllis Project. Um, this was a very a new thing for us. We worked with DDB. Um, and it was a year-long global creative leadership training program for their next generation of female creative leaders from all over the world. Um, and we did this in partnership with the amazing Nancy Vonk and Janet Keston. <laughs> Agreed. Um, and then this is actually a picture of me, not a great shot, but um, thank you to 72 and Sunny Amsterdam for giving me a warm welcome. I was actually on my way to Africa and spent four days in Amsterdam and did a really nice meet and greet with the team there. And then this is me in Rwanda. Um, and I share this image because I went on a trip that was eight American women learning about the lives of women in Rwanda, which is one of the safest and most prosperous economies in Africa. Um, this woman that I got to meet with is the Minister of Gender and sat with her team and learned about every metric that impacts the lives of women and girls in Rwanda and is staggering how much they have been able to improve lives, health, wealth, access to capital, um, and their country is prospering. So I was there just as a student learning um, and thinking about things that maybe could come back into this community and enrich it. Then this is Leeson in Sydney. Um, we brought a one-day conference in August to Sydney, Australia. Um, this is the third international city we visited. We've been to London and Toronto. Um, Brazil, we have you in our sights, um, maybe for next year, so we see you. Um, and then this is most recently this week, we rang the closing bell on Wall Street. Did you guys see that? Um, so this is uh, 
Twitter was our sponsor um, to get us on the platform. I actually rang the closing bell. It was crazy, super fun, um, and just a great way to kind of literally kick off this week with all of you here in New York. Okay. Megan, are you in the audience? Can you stand up? Is she here? So where are you? Get up here. <laughs> Everyone, this is Megan Colleen McGlynn, who started a real amazing uh, thing called Girls' Day. And I think a lot of the women in this, um, it's basically a closed Facebook group, but that is the most open closed Facebook group I've ever belonged to. It's a group of ad women that offer support, ask questions, vent, share great work. And it really is Megan's, um, brainchild, and she's here today as the recipient of our Nancy Hill Award, um, which you'll recall we started last year to honor women who help other women. And so we actually used the Girls' Day platform to think who should be nominated, and Megan was by far, hands down, the biggest winner. So congratulations, um, and we have um, a prize for you, a prize, an award for you. But I'm so glad you're here. Um, <laughs> And I also want to acknowledge the students that are here sitting in the Student Scholar Box. Can you guys stand? It's the second bench there. I'm so glad I met um, all of you last night at the welcome party and the work that you guys submitted to win to be here today was so incredibly sophisticated. And we have students here from BU, from uh, Creative Circus and UT Austin. So um, way to go. This, these are the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you for Adobe for um, enriching this entire event with um, the student energy. And I think your posters, your winning posters, are on display in the venue. I'm not sure exactly where, but if you see them, look for them, because the work is incredible. So congrats to all of you. And um, we also have some more people to honor today, which is our next Creative Leaders. This is an ongoing program we do in partnership with the One Club, um, where we're looking for the women creatives who are on fire with talent and inspiration. And we're announcing today those 10 winners. Um, I, I believe about half of them are here, um, but let's go through the list. These women are truly exceptional. Kate Bannum. She's with Goodby Silverstein and Partners. Sakshi Shudhari. She is our first winner from India. She's with Ogilvy and Mather Mumbai. Kate Desmaris. Um, she's an ACD at Ogilvy and Mather Chicago. Then we have Michaela Galino, Senior Creative Art Director at Johannes Leonardo here in New York. Kristen Graham, ACD of Goodby out of San Francisco. Emmy Nostitz, Creative Director at Droga 5 here in New York. Lucha Orlandi. She's a CD at RGA, San Francisco. Alexandra Sabiki, Art Director at Spotify here in New York. Jessica Toy, Senior Art Director at J. Walter Thompson, New York. And Hannah Whitmark, Art Director at Goodby Silverstein. Um, Goodby had three winners out of, I think there were a thousand people who entered this, and I just want to acknowledge Margaret Johnson's leadership and mentorship in grooming these leaders. Okay, so for those of you that are going to be on the Emerging Creative uh, track today, four of those women will be um, on a panel discussion where they'll be sharing some of their work and talking about what it's like to be right on the cusp of being a household name superstar creative. Um, 
at the conclusion of today, we'll be announcing some other winners. We always do our Three Cheers Award, and we will be announcing one man and one woman this year that have um, achieved that, and that's right before our cocktail party, so stick around for that. And then tomorrow, we are announcing new research um, that we're super excited about. We're also announcing the first agencies to pass our certification program, which is super exciting. Um, and we'll also be announcing the winners of the inaugural Athena Advertising Awards, which is new for us. So there's a lot of dimensionality in this event that didn't, agree before, um, didn't exist before. Um, I just want to give you a little context for how today is going to go for those of you who weren't here last year. So when I'm done here doing opening remarks, um, we're going to have Lovia Jai come out, our MC, who's awesome. And um, she literally just flew in from TED Women in New Orleans, where she delivered a keynote last night. So we're super excited to have her. And then she will um, introduce one panel that goes after her, Now I Know. Uh, and then we're going to have a networking break, and then you go to your themed tracks. So for those of you that remember, there are four, four tracks, ambassadors, leadership, uh, emerging creative and creative directors. Um, creative directors will happen here in the main hall and will be live streamed as part of the live stream. Emerging creatives is in this building on I think the seventh floor. And then next door at the Wyndham is where we have leadership and ambassadors because we are too big to contain in this building, which is awesome. Um, so then you'll come back after your tracks and we'll gather here for closing keynote and then the cocktail party. Tomorrow we'll all be in this room together all day, but just so you know, that's how it's gonna go today. Um, a few little housekeeping items. All of our bathrooms are gender neutral. Um, if you need a private bathroom, there is one on the first tier balcony. You can cer search that out. Um, if, you need, if you are a mother and you need um, to pump we have a mother's lounge. Thank you to Wang Duty for that. Um, basically, you'll go, you'll follow the signage from the main promenade to the side. Um, we have hospital grade pumps. We have fridges. We have refrigerated totes to take your milk home. We want to make it really easy to be a working mom in advertising. Um, and then downstairs, the entire downstairs, Amazon has given us a beautiful social lounge. You can go down there to recharge, to sit down, to recharge your devices. There's a full bookstore down there. That's where the t-shirts and those books I showed you are for sale. Um, and then headshots are, are being taken on the second tier balcony from 8 o'clock to 11, both days, today and tomorrow, and also 4 to 6 tomorrow. Um, DDB is offering that to us, and yesterday I saw a stat that 80 to 90% of op-eds are written by men. And I believe that when you have a killer headshot waiting on your laptop, you are so much more likely to write a, a, a thought piece, and I want you guys all to be doing that. So get your headshot. <laughs> um, and now, this is the moment where I really say a sincere thank you to all of the sponsors. I said this last night at the welcome party. You are not just underwriting this event, you are underwriting this movement. All of those slides I showed you of all of our travels, our research, our blog, our community is driven by the funds that sponsors give us. It is the lifeblood of 3%. So thank you so much, and I want to um, take a minute to honor these champions.
Um, and also, I want to give a shout out to Zambezi. They did the design of the beautiful program you're all holding, and that's a big undertaking. So thank you to Zambezi for that.